I learned how to ski at the Arizona Snow Bowl. Spent birthdays skipping school for the free day because I was blessed enough to be born at the right time of year. I have scanned up the mountain, hitching rides with the snowcat drivers whenever possible to get the first runs after new snow. I have reveled in the speed of my skis and in the bite of the air, felt strong and tired from pushing myself just a little too far, from getting in that last run when my legs were already burned, but I had gone regardless, and that last perfect turn filled me with such contentment that I couldn't imagine doing anything better with my day, with my winter, with my life. And even in those most idealistic times, I was still aware that there were problems for the ski area. How could I not be? I, too, suffered through the nearly snowless years. I, too, dealt with the ski seasons that lasted only days and pissed off everyone that had gambled on buying a pass. I have witnessed the boom years for the snowball and the bust years. Fortunately, the ski area was still keeping a large enough profit margin to open and run when the snow came. Until, sustainably, there were two bad winters in a row. Until the Flagstaff fixture of Mountain Sports, our local winter ski rental, sale, and repair shop went out of business. Until Snowball had enough reason to propose their snowmaking plan, a plan that happened to create cold, fluffy white stuff out of reclaimed water. Then, apparently, the six and a half decades of successful operation no longer provided enough. Mountain Sports closure was followed by threats of Snowball's possible shutdown, with their own version of carrot and stick. In short, the Arizona Snowball claimed it would shut down unless given a way to guarantee snow. There were a flurry of letters to the editor of the Arizona Daily Sun in support of the snowmaking proposal. Save local business, they said. Make snow. Ski seasons that last from November to April. Freshy pow-pow for all. And under the combined weight of Snowball's demands and apparent public support, the city of Flagstaff caved. They decided to sell reclaimed water to the ski area, and this place that I had grown up in became a city divided. A series of suits were filed to stop the use of reclaimed water on the San Francisco peaks. The Sierra Club, the Center for Biological Diversity, and tribes from the surrounding area marched through town, putting forth arguments against snowmaking. These arguments focused on the possible environmental and aesthetic impacts in using reclaimed water, on safety and health concerns, on religious grounds. The replies from Snowball were provided by the general manager via the local newspaper in neat little quotations that could be easily parroted by the skiing faithful. If this was happening anywhere else in the Southwest, Snowball would be heralded as an environmental savior, my skiing friends and family repeated. The Indians are making snow in the White Mountains, they echoed. Why should the concerns of the minority get in the way of our good time? It was during this period of time that I gave up skiing at the Arizona Snowball, and as the years passed, I watched from a distance as Snowball's great new business plan moved forward step by step. The reclaimed water was bought from the city, the environmental assessment was bought from the Forest Service, and court cases were won and lost. On the mountain, trees were leveled, ground burned, protesters prosecuted, and pipe laid. The arguments put forth by tribal members, concerned citizens, and environmental groups failed, and the residents of northern Arizona found themselves split into two camps. You either wanted to save the peaks or reclaim them. According to the Arizona Snowball, the process of snowmaking piggybacks on the natural processes of nature, utilizing air and water plus favorable temperatures to provide a quality product for everyone's enjoyment. What is not mentioned is that this natural process of nature uses reclaimed water to make snow, and that reclaimed water contains agents that are in no way natural. Reclaimed water contains caffeine, hormones, pesticides, and preservatives. It contains the byproducts from being disinfected, the chemicals that are used when you brush your teeth, the hand sanitizers, the bacteria-killing soaps. 
It has all of those prescription drugs that are not fully metabolized, the cleaning supplies that make our homes and hearths sparkle before riddling our water system with chemicals. And as these chemicals, hormones, bacteria, and antibiotics mix, they react to each other in new ways, creating additional compounds yet to be studied. If the thought of making snow with this chemical soup isn't frightening enough, keep in mind that some of the known compounds in reclaimed water contain endocrine-disrupting compounds, or EDCs. And since EDCs affect the pituary, the parathyroid, the thyroid, the thymus, the adrenals, the pancreas, and the ovaries or the testicles, they impact the hormones that regulate an organism's development, growth, reproduction, and behavior. Numerous studies document the effects that EDCs found in reclaimed water have on individual species, including those on fish, amphibians, birds, reptiles, and mammals. Abnormal sexual development has been observed in wildlife exposed to reclaimed water for well over 20 years. Alligators that have been exposed to endocrine blockers in reclaimed water are known to have depressed egg viability and smaller than normal phallus size. As exposure levels increase, so do the numbers of fish appearing with both sets of sex-specific gonads. One expected cause of recent amphibian decline is exposure to estrogens found in reclaimed water. Birds exposed to endocrine blockers are laying eggs with thinner shells. And a recent study on rats found that exposure to endocrine-disrupting agents during the gestational stages can cause changes to the regions of the brain that control sex-specific reproductive physiology and behavior. While these studies were not used in the Forest Service's 2005 Final Impact Statement for Arizona Snowball Facilities Improvements, other studies were mentioned that indicated endocrine disruptors were known to cause behavioral and sexual changes in exposed species found on the San Francisco peaks. Yet because this line of research was still thought to be in its nascent stages, Snowball's proposed snowmaking plans were pushed on down the pipe. In 2012, a report titled State of the Science of Endocrine Disrupting Chemicals was produced by the United Nations Environment Program and the World Health Organization. This report makes evident that exposure to EDCs during fetal development and puberty plays a role in the increased incidences of reproductive diseases, endocrine-related cancers, behavioral and learning problems. But don't worry too much. The Arizona Snow Bowl has it on their own authority that reclaimed water and potable water currently contain many elements but do not pose a health concern. Sure, just as long as you don't eat the snow or expose your children to it. It has been over 10 years now, but I still remember my very last day of skiing at the Arizona Snow Bowl. There was a spring snow and I couldn't seem to go fast enough. It was the kind of snow that begged me to forego turns, and the wind on my face, no matter how warm the day became, brought tears to my eyes. I remember that I had a sunburn slowly blooming across my nose and cheeks at the end of that day, and that I was a little drunk on the mixture of vitamin D and spent adrenaline. If I had known then that this was to be my last day of skiing at the Arizona Snow Bowl, would I have attempted to focus more on the minutia? I think so. I would like to be able to say how many runs I took that day. How many lift rides with the wet snow dripping and sliding off my skis. I would like to remember if I noticed how the late afternoon light reflected off of the fir and the aspen trees as I sat at the lodge. I'd like to remember if I had cider or cocoa and the specifics of that last beer. Small things, really. But there you are. I gave up skiing all those years ago because of the Arizona Snowball's plan to use reclaimed water to make snow. This plan, to expose our forest lands to hazardous compounds, was put into action in order to benefit a privately owned company. I am ashamed that our city has allowed this to happen 
in order to extend the ski season, increase tourism, and sell some shit water. I will continue not skiing at the Arizona Snow Bowl because I do not want to support their unrelenting disregard toward and endangering of wild and revered areas for the recreational purposes of skiing, snowboarding, and or sledding. Now, at the start of each ski season, reclaimed water is used to create a base layer on snowball ski runs. It is the foundation snowpack, and it soaks into the ground. With each year's melt, the reclaimed water used to make snow spreads its contaminants into the ecosystems around the San Francisco peaks and into the designated wilderness areas of this sacred place. <laughs>